Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Welcome back, and thanks for joining us for Board Game Blender. Today's episode, we're talking common sense. And what do I mean by this? Well, I'm actually talking about our senses, like sight, touch, taste, uh, hearing, things like that. And uh, today, we're going to explore a couple of games that deal with these uh, senses that we possess and how games have been able to utilize those to create interesting and unique play experiences. Just things you would not expect to find in games, as well as talk about a few other things that relate to those senses and games that find interesting ways to maybe remove your ability to do something in a game, whether it's for the entirety of the game or just for a round or something like that. So hopefully this is an interesting discussion and an in interesting exploration of some of these ideas for you. Hope you find at least one new game that um, maybe catches your eye, piques your interest, and you can look into it some more. Hey, you never know, you might find a new favorite. So, without further ado, let's dig into the episode, have some fun, and I'll see you in just a little bit. Hey there, friends of the blend. This is Chris and Lindsay from Behind the Box, and today we want to talk to you about a game that uses your sense of touch. That is Braintopia. So, in Braintopia, you'll be competing with other players to solve mind puzzles as quick as possible, which will help you earn tokens representing different parts of the brain, and the first person to collect all four brain pieces is the winner. Now, what's unique about this game is that there are tactile cards. So, at the very start of the game, you pass these cards around to the table, and you each get a chance to feel them and try and memorize what it is that it's representing, so that later, when they come up in the game, you'll have hopefully have a better chance at guessing what it is. <laughs> hopefully, but it's not as simple as that because <laughs> you've got, let's say, the strawberry and you look at it and it's got these little black bumps all over it which represents the seeds and you can feel it and you go, yeah, it's a strawberry. And you've got the peach and that's kind of fuzzy and then like a rope and that feels very coarse. But there's usually at least one other thing that feels very similar. So you've got the strawberry, you also have the basketball that also feels round, it's also bumpy got the peach, you've also got a teddy bear that feels very fuzzy as well. So it's really cool though because it kind of has to push your limits a little bit in, in your memory and how well that you felt these cards so that you can feel for those very small differences between them. It's really, really cool. Yeah, the key is in the details. Mm -hmm. Now there's also tons of other cards that test other parts of your brain too. So things that test your coordination, your reasoning, mazes that you've got to quickly figure out the solution for. <laughs> We do need to throw out a disclaimer though, you need to be safe when playing this game. It is very dangerous because the way that you actually answer cards is by slamming your hand down first. The first person that covers the card with their hand gets to take a shot at completing the puzzle. A lot of other fingers are going to come flying in at that same time though, and if somebody's got a broken finger, it makes the tactile stuff a lot more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, if you've got a game that you know of that uses your senses, we definitely want to hear about it. So please leave it in the comments below. We'd be super interested to check it out. And if you're interested in other board game discussions, then you can always swing by our YouTube channel. And um, we're always there putting stuff out there. <laughs> and you can always check us out on our social media links that we've got down below. Yeah, until the next one, we'll see you soon. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye. here and today we are going to talk about a game that features our senses in an interesting way and I thought it would be fun to see if Nora learned anything from the past episodes and got to know some new cool games so I gave Nora a challenge she had to pick out a game of her own that incorporated the theme of this week so Nora what did you bring us well look what I got at the one dollar shop and it's chocolate! I am never gonna let you pick a game again. <laughs> but it's chocolate! But it's Trivial Pursuit, family edition. Didn't you learn anything? Okay, Nora, what are the rules of this amazing game? I don't know the rules. But you prepared this, right? You prepared it, right? But it's chocolate! <sighs> Unbelievable. Okay, Nora, are you ready for this? There's a lot on the line here. A lot of chocolate is on the line, to be exact. 
we are going to ask you the first question, and the first question is a geography question, and it is, in which town can you find the Arc de Triomphe? Paris? <gasps> that is correct! Yay! Yay! And you get the chocolate! Yay! But not yet, first you have to answer the other two questions that are on this chocolate. The second question that I have on this chocolate is a very hard question for you. Unless you paid attention while I was playing games. The question is, what job does Mario have? Mario. It's -a me, Super Plumber! <laughs> yeah, he was a, a plumber, plumbing stuff. Are you ready for the last question? Another. Yes, the last question, and then you're gonna have this chocolate, which I've hold on to like five minutes in my hand, so it's all wet and squishy. And the question is going to be, which title did the queens and kings have in old Egypt? Pharaoh? Are you sure? Are you sure about this answer? Is this going to be your last answer, Nora? I think the last so. answer for this chocolate. Yes! Okay! And the answer is right! Yay! Yeah, I got the chocolate! Eat the chocolate! You wanna pee? Are you happy now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is. Oh. Okay, I'm ready for this. Let's go! Are you ready for the first question? Yes! Okay. In which country is Tyrol a county? County. Let me think. Okay, I think in Tyrol you have like the Oktoberfest, right? And our family. No, no, it is my chocolate! It's Germany, it's Germany, okay? Don't touch it! And that's wrong. <gasps> no, that's right! It's Austria, duh. Don't I get the chocolate now? Like, do I still get the chocolate? Mm, okay, maybe if you get the next question right. Okay, okay, okay. Yes! I love second chances. Which mineral... Yes? ...can Superman weaken? <gasps> Kryptonite! Yes! It's a geeky question and I can do geeky questions. Give me another geeky question. I actually didn't know that. Kryptonite. Next question! In which country did the first Olympic Games take place? Not geography again, okay. In which country did they, okay, but no, no, this, this is, is history, this is history. I can do this, really this is history. I think it was Greece. Duh. Yeah! Yeah! First do a dance. No, I don't want to do a dance, I just want my chocolate. That's not dance, but you got the first question wrong, so you have to do an extra. Okay. No, it's my chocolate now. Anna. Yes? I feel sick. Me too. I think we made a huge mistake. Ooh, this chocolate! For today's quirky game, I wanted to not even drill down on one specific game, but sort of talk about some of the other senses that we possess and games that have been able to utilize those to create interesting concepts, interesting ideas, such as, uh, and before I dig in here, uh, there's a few that are more the removal of senses, right? So for example, when you play Shadows Over Camelot, the card game, there's a moment where you might not be allowed to speak to one another, just for that, just for a, a piece of the game. In Space Alert, same thing, you are planning together something, and suddenly the, the communications break down, and you can no longer speak to one another and plan what's going on. But really what I'm talking about here are things like the sense of balance. And now you see this in a lot of dexterity games and sometimes you have to look at something and, and using your own sense of balance uh, and really it's largely sight and perception. Consider if you put something somewhere what's going to happen to the entire structure. A recent favorite of mine is Minara that very much highlights this idea. But there are some that utilize you, your body, right? Like Dancing Eggs, uh, or even Yogi, which is a, a small card game 
in which you draw a card, it tells you somewhere to place, let's say between your shoulder and your head, right? You must hold it here and you will continue playing and you will continue having cards be held between fingers, held between your knees, things like that. And so it forces you to continue playing while challenging your sense of balance and your ability to to hold all these things in the air at once, you know, and continue to perform the task. Uh, we also have the sense of direction. And there's a couple of games uh, that have done this in very interesting ways. One is Mask of Anubis, a game in which, it's a cooperative game, in which one player is wearing a, uh, a 3D or rather a VR um, mask. You're putting your, your phone in there, your smart device, and you are going to be seeing a corridors, several paths, and you're describing those to the other players, and the other players are constructing that on the board. So how you describe things, how the other players are using what you're describing to understand their sense of direction and where things would be in relation to one another, that's an interesting puzzle. Even better than that, as far as the puzzle goes, maybe not necessarily a better game, but challenging that sense of direction is a game called Sidi Baba. And in Sidi Baba, there's a player who, as you are in this, you know, cavernous uh, um, path, you are going to tell the player which way you are facing, so you'll move your figure face a specific way. That player running the game has, behind their screen, the entire layout of this, uh, of this network, and they'll simply show you on a board what it is you see directly ahead of you. And you are going to have to start putting together as you face one way, turn, face the other. Maybe you just see a wall that way. Maybe you see a path down that way. You really have to use your sense of direction to understand the shape of this place and which way you should be going, how to, you know, discover it all simply by looking ahead at a painting of what you see. It's a very tricky idea, very cool. And then lastly, I wanted to highlight a recent uh, favorite of many people and this is The Mind, a game which uses your sense of time to a certain extent. You know, the idea of having to understand how long you wait to perform actions in the game. It's a, it's a very clever concept. Uh, everyone, of course, uh, if you're not familiar with The Mind, is playing together in order to discard all of their cards in sequential numerical order. And so you're dealt a few random between 1 and 100. And everyone simply stares at each other, tries to share a sense of time as to when something should be played without any other form of communication. If I have the number 14, how long is too long until I play it? Am I waiting too long? Does that play over there think that their 21 should be played first? And it's such a cool way to use one of our senses that really is outside the box of what you find in, in pretty much all, uh, maybe not all, but most, if not all, uh, board games and card games out there. So let me know in the comments below what other games you can think of that either remove your senses while you are playing these games or force you to utilize and uh, really dive into one of our other senses while you are playing to allow you to do well or simply to allow you to play. Uh, I'm very curious to hear what you can come up with for this sort of uh, discussion and category. So I look forward to your comments down below and thanks for checking this out. I will see you next time. Hey guys, I'm not Ben. And I'm not Tommy. And we are talking about this week on Blender Common Senses. Common senses. Common sense. Common senses. Consensus. The census. <laughs> this taken every five years. No. And this week on Consider, Consider the, the comments. comments, I was not the one that screwed up this time. I didn't screw up. I was just slow to start. <laughs> We're talking about dancing eggs. Guys. <clears throat> eggs. You eat my, them. My face is still Taste. hurting from laughing. No, oh, don't say that. It, it is. It is. Okay. <laughs> What? Well, let's just go ahead and talk about our comments. My <laughs> first comment is from, apparently, Tommy, because El Arahara said, I've never laughed so hard during this game in my life. My cheeks hurt after playing. 
It's physical comedy <laughs> turned into a game. So oh, thanks man. for stealing my comment. Well, you know what? My guy, um, Ultimario, he, uh, he makes a good point, and I feel like this might have some actually weight to it. Um, not so good. One laugh wonder. Couldn't even be bothered to play it with the kids, even if the first game was a little bit of fun. One laugh wonder. One laugh wonder. And have you played that game with the... Yes, yeah, speak out. Speak out, or mm-hmm. any of the iterations of it. Yeah. It feels like it might have, have this same... Like, the Maybe. first time you play with a specific group, it's hilarious. Everybody has a great time. It's super funny. And if you're then, unfamiliar with Dancing Eggs... <clears throat> which you probably are. You probably are. It's an older game. A little more difficult to find. You roll a die, and it tells you something to do. You might be shouting, cock a doo or you get to say, cluck, cluck, cluck. Or maybe you have to run around the table as fast as you can. Or you just get an egg for free. Or you get an egg for free. But anyways, you're acquiring these eggs through these silly tasks. Um, but the eggs, you take them and you roll a die and it tells you where to place them. And you may place them in the crook of your arm. Or under your armpit. Or underneath your neck. And your double chin. You're between your knees. And have you ever seen someone run around a table with an egg between their knees? Try doing it with three <laughs> eggs between your arms. <laughs> Anyways, it's just pure craziness as you're shouting stuff out, trying to catch bouncing eggs and balance them in different... But uh, I could see it being that, you know, yeah. that... It's it's a load of fun, at yeah. least the first time. Least Maybe the... even the second time. And again, if you're playing it with different groups, it'll probably... Renew that. Exactly. Yeah. But but I do feel like it has that, like, it's it gets kind of old pretty fast. Yes. Much like uh, any of these kinds of games would. Yeah, these children's silly dexterity games. Yeah. But it has our recommendation. Yeah, for sure. At least play it once. You'll get a good laugh. And if you really want to play extreme <clears throat> dancing eggs, play with real eggs. <laughs> Just don't come find us. No. no we if, don't if something bad happens. I apologize. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. topic for the blunder this week is games that use senses in an unconventional or unique way, which was a pretty hard topic. We didn't have many slash any games currently in our collection that I think qualified, except for maybe Meeple Circus, which is really good. Um, I thought, though, of a game that we used to own called Winerd, which is basically a roll to move where you get to different points on the board and, and you have to just, drink wine well, and uh, compare. Your, your, your wine tasting. Your wine it's, tasting. It's more sophisticated than you're just drinking. Then you just um, chug a whole yeah. bottle and, of wine. Okay, and so you actually have to like guess which wine it is and yeah. then you actually write down clues like a la clue. But it definitely uses taste in an unconventional way. Yeah. And now your parents own it. Another game that we recently got as a door prize at SaltCon, uh, Yellow was handing out kids games, and so we got Master Fox, where you put on a fox blindfold and feel around for little pieces, and we got um, Pingo, Pingo, Pingo Pingo, which at some point during the game, you're listening for the soundtrack, there's like music, and then at some point, you don't know when, it's going to go, Pingo, Pingo. And those games now are at my parents' house. As well. It, we... it occurred to me that we were just taking it for granted that every game that I can think of, and if you can think of a different one, leave it in the comments mm-hmm. about how I'm wrong. Um, but every game that I can think of relies on sight in a pretty heavy way. Mm-hmm. And there's even an issue that's getting increased attention in board gaming, which is color blindness. So just, you know, not maybe making red and green two colors that you need to be able to tell the difference between is just like an easy peasy thing to do that yeah. avoids certain people not being able to play it or having yeah. to modify the game. But what if you're fully blind? Um, what are the possibilities of a a game that's not using an, a different sense as a gimmick, but it's using it as a real way to allow more people to enjoy the game, right? I mean, I, I'm trying to articulate the idea of the game as being this thing that's like, unfortunately, you access through the real world, but it's really something beyond the pieces. It's yeah. beyond the board. Mm-hmm, like a book. 
Like a book. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that was easier. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. So what do you think? I think it's a great idea. And I mean, maybe there are um, things out there that we don't know about because we haven't had to seek them out. So I'm curious. So games that have used Braille, maybe? Yeah. Um, but it is a good point. Is We want this hobby to be more inclusive. And it already is, to a certain extent, um, easy for anyone to access. You know it doesn't. Be so interesting. What? People who know ASL playing American Sign Language or other country sign language, I don't know what the deal is with that, but playing a game like Werewolf would be yeah. super interesting. I would love to observe that. I wonder, there probably are groups. I bet there are. Yeah. If you know about anybody, you know, uh, groups of people playing social deduction games via ASL, or if you know any or games. any game. Really? You can, I'm just curious yeah. to see how that, because it's so much about arguing, and ASL is actually a very expressive language, and but it's visual, obviously, and not auditory, so um, I took a class on ASL in I college. Take, I took a class on ASL, too. Well, yeah. there you go. Okay, if you know anything about that, or if you know about any games that um, are playable by someone who seriously... Um, Can't see. Yeah. Uh, is differently abled in that way? I don't know how to... I, um, or if you know any games that you should, we should bring to our Kaylee's parents' house, or yeah. that you want to bring to Kaylee's parents. Yeah, it's a great place to just store games. Do you for, have any? It's like a time vault there. It's and they <laughs> never get rid of it. No. So any game that you don't want to own anymore, but there's no aftermarket for, and you think Kaylee's parents can handle, <laughs> um, just let us know. Put us note in the comments, and yeah. yeah thanks for watching this. Cheers, or listening, or reading the subtitles. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back to Game Olympics, where we award bronze, silver, and gold medals to a category of my own choosing and, of course, my own bias. So today, I'm going to be awarding those medals to non-traditional senses. So let's kick it off with bronze. This one goes to our sense of pride. Best seen in the moments when you play an older portal game without making any rules mistakes. That feels good. Or that feeling when you are playing with that uncle or your grandma and you get to the final round of the game and they finally do not ask, uh, so what can I do on my turn? That's pride. Our silver medal goes to our sense of adventure. Best seen when you decide to buy a little known foreign game without really knowing what you're going to get. Examples include Throne of the World, El Tesoro de Isla Tortuga, Itchy Feet, the travel game, and whatever this is. What is this game? And our gold medal goes to, of course, our sense of humor. What a wonderful thing. Best seen in me personally as that moment, the last round of Power Grid when I realize I'm $2 short for what I actually wanted to do, or in Pandemic when it suddenly dawns on me that the player deck is going to run out before my turn, not after my turn, which would have won me the game. Because, as you can see by those two examples, I can't count. Those are my Game Olympic medals to non-traditional senses. And I'm curious, which senses would you give these medals to? Let me know in the comments below, and I'm going to see you real soon. Howdy folks, welcome to Two Player Showdown. I'm Rebecca. I'm Hunter. And today... We are going to talk about a game. A game that plays two to five players, is less than 30 minutes long, and it's a dexterity game that appeals to your sense of touch. To make it even more immersive and to enhance that sense of touch game, you either play it in the dark or with a blindfold. What strange game is this? It is... Lice Shower. Lice Shower is an amazing party game. The best way to learn Lice Shower is by watching it played. So let's take a look. Lice Shower is a real-time game. You place out a number of locations based on the number of players. For a full number of five players, you have eight locations and less and less one less for each number of players until you get down to two, which uses five locations. What you're going to have is you're going to have a bag of discs in your little bag. These represent 
the lice, the different types of lice. You're going to reach into your bag, you're going to pull out a token, and you're going to feel it, and you're going to find the same location on the board that feels the same as the, the tile, and you're going to place that your, your, your tile there. Then you're going to go back in your bag, you're going to pull out another t thing, and you're going to feel, and you're going to find the location. But there is a trick to the game. You cannot place one of your tokens on top of another one of your tokens. If you do, those tokens do not score. So you need to have your opponent's token on top of your token for it to count. So you want to stagger your, your tokens. It's a little harder in a two-player game. With more players, there's going to be more people obviously placing tokens out, so you have a better chance. But there's more locations, so it kind of balances out. So the trick to the game is you play it blindfolded. So you have to completely use your sense of touch and you have to reach out and find the place that it goes, put it there. You need to remember... <laughs> Remembering is the tricky part. How many tiles you've <laughs> placed at each location. So when you go back to the location, you go, okay, I had, that was a second one there. There's three there now, so that means that she must have placed one, so now I can place one on top of that one. So you've got to kind of stack them up, stagger them. Really tough to do, especially when you're on a timer. Again, real time, you can have the handy-dandy light shower. Show Live shower app on your phone. You just play that, and it's randomized when the game ends. So it's going to be anywhere from 30 seconds to a little more than a minute, depending. Just kind of random, so you don't know exactly when it's going to end. So you go as fast as you can. I think you covered all the rules. You ready to play? Let's do this. All right, let's get our masks ready. I'll get ready to start the app. You about ready? All right, here we. Yes. Here we go. upside down <laughs> did you really all right that's awesome all right, let's start here let's, awesome. let's score one okay all right so i got the only one here that one's good i get a point for that one let's okay. see what we got here it's you me you ah perfect yes. perfect we... for once i didn't put them and together and then you me you look at that Woo! nice nice job. finally We're and then uh oops <laughs> Wrong. That's funny. And then me, and then you. Oh, wow. So, oh, oh. And, and got, you. This is the best game I've had yet. All right, so I got four points. I got six. Not too bad. So there you have There's one round of Life Shower. Life Shower takes place over three rounds. After each round, you shower one of the locations, and we randomly select one, and you take it out of the game. You're going to have less locations to go to, but you keep Chips. all your tiles so that you have some duds now, right? That you have to kind of filter out um, from, from the rest of them. And it didn't really show in that, but if you put, like I said, if you put two in a row of your tile, those are all eliminated. You get no points for those, so you have to kind of alternate between you and other players. And there you have it. There is Lice Shower. Thank you so much for joining us today, and cool catch Ray! It's basically a dexterity game. It's called Lice Shower. And that's going to do it for us, everybody. A big thanks to all my contributors, of course. A big thanks to you for tuning in and checking this out. I hope to see you again in a couple of weeks for our following episode. And as I always say, hey, stay a friend of the blend. I'll see you next time.